Thank you, thank you so much. Woo, hot mic. Thank you to the Board of Trustees, President Livingston, Provost Sint, and thank you to Dr. Shackmuth and Mana Le Montaigne for helping make this day possible. I have felt so welcomed. I am truly honored and humbled to be here addressing you, the incredible class of 2022. I'm just gonna warn you, I'm probably gonna cry. I'm just like that when I talk as myself, I cry. I make my living as a professional comedy writer. I've had to turn in scripts on a tight deadline, rewrite new scenes with the clock ticking, come up with jokes on the spot as John Cena glared back at me like I was Triple H. I can handle pressure. And yet, when I sat down to prepare my remarks for you today, I had the worst case of writer's block I've ever had in my life. So, I took the lessons that I learned from Lewis when I had a paper due. And uh, I put it off for a couple of weeks. <laughs> Hit the snack bar, ordered some mozzarella sticks, ate them. Cleaned my room, took a nap, repeated that for a few days, and then realized, oh no, I'm giving this speech tomorrow. So I pulled an all-nighter and was just able to crap it out right before I had to turn it in, or in this case, deliver it to you here, now, in this moment. And so far, I think it's going great. <laughs> One reason I think I struggle to find the words is that this moment is important to me. To come back to this school and speak to you is important to me. I love my time at Lewis. I love this school. I hope you loved it too. Shield Hall for life. <laughs> Lewis was a place where the impossible became possible. See, I'm from a very, very small town of less than a thousand people. And although we were rich in love, my family struggled to make ends meet. I never had a computer. I rarely traveled. I never thought I would fly in an airplane and didn't until I came to Lewis. I had the privilege of being on the volleyball team here and we had a tournament in Colorado Springs. I remember the flight so clearly. On the plane, it was us and a bunch of senior citizens that were traveling together for reasons that weren't important to 18-year-old me then but are fascinating when I think about it now. Where were they going? I was so nervous to fly that to help me relax, I got the entire plane to act as though we were on a roller coaster. I convinced all these seniors to put their hands in the air, and we screamed as we lifted off the runway. It sounds terrifying, but it was actually pretty great. In fact, afterward, the flight attendant announced, that was so much fun, the pilot wants to turn around and do it again. <laughs> and I was like, no, no, no thank you. So, to all of you celebrating your degree in aviation today, congratulations. You get to look forward to goofballs like me as passengers. And although the graduates of the nursing program are receiving their diplomas at this afternoon ceremony, I want to acknowledge those students who committed themselves on their selfless career choice, who saw that we were in a global pandemic and said, yep, that's what I'm being called to do, to serve my community by helping others. That's bravery. Let's give it up for them. And to those of you who, like me, committed to getting uh, an arts degree or a theater degree, well, that's a different kind of bravery, isn't it? Really? In this economy? We're doing it? Yeah, really, we are. When things get tough, people need an escape. They want to laugh, forget their troubles, watch a light, heartwarming tale like Squid Game. We will always look to the storytellers. So I'd like to take this moment to personally thank my theater professors, the late great Chet Kondratowicz, Keith White, Harold McKay, and Joe Slowick for guiding and instilling a confidence in this small town girl, preparing me for what I now do today, write fart jokes. <laughs> you help make the impossible possible. And those cabaret tables at the Philip Lynch Theater, I made those, not to brag, but I made them by myself. You're welcome. And for those of you whose emphasis is in computer sciences or the sciences, congratulations. I'm excited to see what new innovations you'll bring to the world. Before you leave here today, I just need one of you to help me set up my Venmo on my phone. And finally, to those out there who may not yet know what you want to do with your life, you are not alone. I have a piece of advice for you that was given to me that I have always held sacred. Find the thing you love to do that you're passionate about 
and dare to suck at it. Dare to be bad. Dare to fail. I dare you. Now, this is important. This advice is not for the aviation majors. You all really got to know what all those buttons mean and what they do, how to fly that plane, which bolts go in where. But for the rest of us, it's good advice. Look, let's be real. You won't remember anything I've said to you today. You're like, wrap it up, lady. I want to get out of here and celebrate. And you should. I hope you party your butts off. You deserve it. So I'll simply leave you with this. The key to success is your willingness to endure failure. My biggest successes in life came after massive failures. When I was your age, my dream was to perform at the Second City. It's all I wanted to do. My first audition was so bad that they asked me to sit down and had someone else go up with my scene partner so that my scene partner could have a better shot. I was crushed. I was actually a grad coach here and I came back from that audition and I went to my office and I cried for hours. But I had a dream and I was not going to give up on that dream. That failure made me realize just how green I was. So I took every improv class that I could. I committed to being a student. Every day, nights, weekends, I interned to afford classes. I watched show after show and studied other performers. And when I went back to audition a second time, that commitment paid off. I got in. No matter what level of success you attain, try to come at it knowing that you always, always have something to learn. Now, that's the, probably the last thing you want to hear on graduation day. <laughs> Keep on learning, but that's how it is. To quote Hall of Fame Bears coach Mike Ditka, ah, success is not permanent, failure is not fatal. That was my Ditka impression. I just dared to suck and did. I'm taking risks everywhere up here. What he said, though, that stays with me is success is not permanent and failure is not fatal. Today is a celebration of your success, but this success is not permanent. As you leave here today to take the next step on wherever you're going, it's going to get tough. You've already felt it. It's already been tough for you. And in those moments where it feels like there's too much noise, confusion, or pain, and you feel like you're on the brink, I invite you to get still. Find stillness. Get quiet. There you'll find your answers. And if that doesn't work, try finding ways to help others. It's a quick fix to get you out of your own head. And I invite you to laugh. Laugh a lot. Make others laugh. There's nothing greater. So in the spirit of you making your next step, I invite all of us to put our arms up in the air like we're on a roller coaster. Come on, everybody. Come on, President. Yeah! And let's scream! Yeah! Thank you to this class, to this institution. It is my honor. Thank you very much.